I think that all gamers at some point in their life have dealt with some kind of addiction to gaming. Maybe not like a drug addiction level, but an addiction nonetheless. So with that, let's talk about my addiction to gaming growing up. Oh yeah, now I've got your attention, don't I? Considering the majority of my audience is in their 20s, I'm gonna say a good chunk of you just got smacked in the face by a wave of nostalgia. Ah, the simpler times. I'm sure many of you have heard about the game RuneScape, and uh, in case you haven't noticed, I used to play it. A long time ago, before League of Legends even existed, and maybe before even some of you existed, I played this MMORPG, a massive multiplayer online role-playing game. And yes, I did have to look that up. Now I liked all kinds of games as a kid. Super Mario, Tetris, Pokemon, a penguin, but one of the first games I got obsessed with was RuneScape. Speaking of obsessions, I'm always a fan of free money, and Opinion Outpost is a League player's dream come true. It's a survey site that allows people to get paid for just expressing their opinions, and I know you all love to do that. <clears throat> it's incredibly easy to use, and you can cash directly into PayPal or even Amazon gift cards. It's 100% safe with thousands of reviews on Trustpilot, so make sure to click on the link in the description to start making the monies. Thanks Opinion Outpost for sponsoring today's video. Anyways, I found RuneScape on a site called Miniclip, and that's also when all of my friends at school started playing it too. I feel like this game shaped so many childhoods. I mean, I remember sitting in my grandparents' house on their computers with dial-up trying to load the sucker up. It took 30 minutes just to load the login screen. To say I was obsessed with this game may be an understatement. Let me put this into perspective for you. My parents were those parents that turned the internet off at night because they thought I wouldn't sleep if it was on. Like, come on! They were totally right, of course, but that's beside the point. Every night, to turn the internet off, they would take the modem that was located in their room and unplug it from the wall. But you know what they say, the stricter the parents, the more stubborn the kids. I was determined to play this game every night no matter what. I had to get my 99 woodcutting, man. So every night, I went on a mission to turn the internet back on. However, it was easier said than done. Problem is that the modem was located upstairs on the far side of my parents' room. So every night, I would wait for them both to fall asleep which was approximately around 11.30 p.m. Once they were asleep, Operation No Sleep would begin. All right, the first thing I did, throw on a pair of socks. Why socks, you may ask? Well, socks were essential because we had tile flooring, and if you were barefoot, your feet would stick to it, making for some unwanted noise. Next, I made sure all of the lights were turned off outside of their room, so when I did open the door, none of it would shine through. This included the microwave light. Don't forget about the microwave light. It's dim, but deadly in the dark. Step three, determine if the TV in their room is on or off. Most of the time, my mom would fall asleep to watching TV, but not all the time, so I'd have to check. It wasn't necessarily better to have the TV on or off, they both had their pros and cons. Having the TV on created white noise to cover up the sounds of my movement, but it also made it possible to get the job done quicker. While on the other hand, having the TV off meant they couldn't see as much, but if you made one misstep, they were more likely to hear it and wake up. Before I entered the room, I'd check for snoring. It's always best to make sure they're really asleep. Luckily, my mom snored pretty loud, so it made it pretty easy. The next step was to open the door, a simple but delicate task. Like a lot of other doors out there, ours was very loud and squeaky. But after multiple practice trials during the daytime, I found that if you pull the knob towards you hard enough and then turn the knob while maintaining force away from the hinges, it created little to no noise when opening the door. True story. Now when opening the door, I made sure to only open it just enough for me to squeeze in. And at that point, I got on the ground, army crawled my way across the room, and plugged the router back in. All I had to do was reverse the last steps and ya boy was out of there. Unfortunately, um, our challenge wasn't over quite yet. This is when phase two began. At the time, I wasn't old enough to have my own laptop, so I needed to borrow from my sister. Unfortunately, like most people, she had a password. But using my insane hacking skills, I managed to decode and uncover the password. Just kidding, I wasn't smart enough to do that. However, luckily, her laptop was one of the very first to have a finger identification system on the side. So while she was away, I quickly added one of my fingerprints to the computer so it would unlock the laptop when I scanned it. Now all that was left was to grab the laptop after she fell asleep sleep and voila, internet and a computer. You better believe I played all night and it was honestly the best thing ever. There's nothing like late night gaming when you're not supposed to be up. You're probably wondering if I ever got caught and uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> But the only reason I did was because I didn't turn the internet back off in the morning. That was pretty dumb now that I think about it. I wasn't quite smart enough to think that far ahead yet, okay? After I got caught, they ended up putting a safety program on all of the computers called Net Nanny, Ugh. Which basically monitored how much and when you could access the internet from the computer itself. Second only to splinters, that thing was literally the worst thing in the world. Talk about a fun killer. On top of that, they also ended up hiding the power cord to the modem. 
home. It's like they didn't trust me or something. But you know what they say? The stricter the parents, the craftier the kids. It wouldn't be fun without a challenge, right? The power cord problem was an easy solution. Literally child's play. It was a pretty universal charging cord, so I just went out and bought one from a Radio Shack. However, the Net Nanny program was a little trickier, I'm not gonna lie. That thing sucked. Still, one day I found that if you leave the RuneScape client and window open, you can still log into the game even though Net Nanny shuts down everything else. Biggest life hack NA. And so, the adventure began once again. Of course, this time, I made sure to turn the internet back off after I was done. Learn from your mistakes, kids. After that, I had a few close calls like this one time where my mom woke up to go to the bathroom and I was literally mid-army crawl towards the modem. Luckily, she didn't see me, but holy crap, I almost had a heart attack. But besides that, I don't think I ever got caught again. I'm pretty sure I did this like all of middle school and maybe even some in high school. Coincidentally, RuneScape was actually the way I heard about League of Legends for the first time too. I watched a lot of YouTube back then and one of the YouTubers I watched was a guy called Growscore. You may have heard of him. However, one day he just stopped posting RuneScape videos and started playing League. As you know, I wouldn't go on to play it myself until college, but that was my first time hearing about the game. Also, be sure to let me know in the comments if you guys have any crazy gaming addiction stories. Also, I'm so screwed whenever that League MMO comes out. <laughs> Merry Christmas, and if you like the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks, bye.